the Penguins are on the verge of losing like the one of the longest playoff streaks in the NHL, which is, I believe, 16 years. Yeah. Um, and they they made some moves at the deadline. I think their biggest one being Mikhail Granlund, um, who has not worked out. Let's say, I mean, like, listen, like he's not the problem there. I think they have some other problems, but he wasn't necessarily the move that they needed to make. And I don't think he's been a very positively contributing member of that team. Um, And earlier this week, yesterday or two days ago on Monday, uh, apparently Frank Cervelli said on, on his podcast that the pen penguins and Canucks were far enough down the road on a JT Miller trade that the Canucks were getting two firsts and trying to figure out where to flip Jason Zucker. I, I think we've talked about that before, but just two things is funny. Just how did Vancouver not say yes to that? And second, what is Ron Hextel thinking for that contract? I think one thing I look about, I look at is the Jason Zucker trade. Like it just didn't, I don't think it worked out in my opinion. I think, for what you gave up to get him. And he he never reached that 30 by 30 player. I think Pittsburgh thought they were getting. He only really had that for one season in Minnesota. And then it wasn't even the season that he was on the verge of getting towards when they first got him. And I thought that was a contract that you could let get off the books, you know, have some cap space and do something with it. But then to think about getting JT Miller for that long at that age, um, that would have been a really bad one, especially because I think we've been so used to Penguins before dealing dealing from a position of strength. I think they they used to sell draft picks like crazy. I remember there was a joke one time. I can't remember who made it, but they said that their their rookie summer camp is probably going to be Samuel Pula, and that's it because they just traded everybody else. And I think they're at a point now where you can't deal first round picks like that anymore because. You know, I'm not like worst comes to worst, a Malkin or a Crosby goes down, or the team just is g- staying on this trend that we're seeing right now. Like we don't know what those first round picks are going to become. Right, and just for context, the Jason Jason Zucker trade was back in uh, 2020, right before everything uh, had shut down, and it was so the Penguins acquired Jason Zucker, and the Wild acquired Alex Galchenyuk, who was on the last year of his deal. Kalen Addison was one of their first round prospects at the time, yeah, and then a 2021 first round pick, which was 26th overall that year, and became Carson Lambos, uh, who. The wild drafted yeah from listen i think even when the rumors came out at the time that they were talking about a player and it could have been jt miller it didn't make sense then it's not i i don't think that's changed like you look at where the 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 the, the problems in pittsburgh exist and you could argue they're taught like I was saying I was reading earlier they have six uh 20 goal scorers Pittsburgh <sighs> six which means so their top six is fine it's gone horrendous everywhere else and I I think you look at their inconsistent goaltending and their D which got worse over the summer I mean they traded Mike Matheson for Jeff Petrie and then traded away John Marino for Ty Smith. Who's not um, playing. Right. And yeah. they would love John Marino right now, wouldn't they? I mean, arguably Mike Matheson too. Um, why JT Miller is always going to be the question. I, I, I saw someone on Twitter say that Ron Hextall should be fired just for getting that far uh, in a trade like that. And I, I'm not, I, listen, I, I don't even know if he survives until September, to be yeah, honest. I, I don't know because, you, you know, like I think he, he did his best to rejuvenate a sense of consistency with that team. But it just, man, the contracts that you either adopt or you gave out, I don't I don't know. Um, You talk about the top six doing so well. Yeah, that was great. But when we talk about their bottom six, it just didn't work out. Um, They gave Brock McGinn that contract to get Mikhail Granlund. Um, and Dmitry Kulikov, I guess, uh, 
you trade away te- Teddy Bruger, who was one of your best pedal to kill options, and you just brought in more money. So I, I don't know. I, I think like if yeah, I, I don't know if Ron Hextall survives after the season, especially if Penguins don't make the playoffs and it's becoming a real it might become a reality. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to that because we'll do our um we'll do our wild card sorry, wild card roundup. I couldn't remember the name of it for the life of me for a second there. Um yeah, like they did it like you said, their trade deadline or wasn't particularly eventful. You again traded Teddy Bluger, brought in uh, Granlund, then brought, tried bringing the band back together and bringing Nick Bonino back, and traded for Dmitry Kulikov. So I just I, this whole JT Miller, like what's the what's the thought process on? bringing in JT Miller for the length that he's going to be a part of your team. Right. That I think that's, that's the, the biggest question for me is okay. Like you're going to play JT Miller as a winger, I assume, because he's not going to be your third line center for that price tag, at that price tag. Um, you throw him next to one of Crosby and Malkin, and I'm sure he'll do fine, as has multiple wingers over the last, I don't know, 15 years. But that doesn't fix your problem. You have inconsistent no. goaltending. You have okay. You have, your defense has gotten worse from last year. I I just don't get the JT Miller what the what the point was there like was it to make a splash is is it was it for the sake of making a splash I want to bring up like what what was Jim what were Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvin doing How could you say I, I, you I you said it before How could <laughs> yeah. you say no to that How could you say no to two first round picks and Jason Zucker who you were going to flip like it was someone like listen maybe they didn't say no maybe maybe Ron Hextall backed out that's a possibility but how could you get to the point that you say no to two first round picks Jason Zucker I'm sure there might have been other stuff included I I I don't know I think there was a I think this was going to be a a a a big a big deal like that is tough you know why because they needed assets to trade for Philip Ronick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. But I mean, listen, they would they would have gotten another first round pick. I know. I don't know what they're doing. I just I do. Why did you say no? Like what? what uh, listen, I don't know. I want to know why it fell through. I guess would be my question: Is how did it get that far and then it fell through? Was there just not a ton, enough time yet? What was it that? Ah, oh, man, because that would have been a blockbuster. That yeah, would have been, been a trade if if I, they got that far. I think just that mentality again, and like I could be wrong, but it just would. Not penguins. The Canucks is this feeling of the core they have with the guys they have right now, with everybody kind of signed to maybe two or three years. They believe they're better than what they've shown. But since they made that, you know, that COVID playoff run, um, it's been the same every season, and they're just not refusing to change in any way. And I, I don't know why JT Miller has to be the constant there, like. You know, talking about like why is JT Miller the constant there, not like a Bill Horvat <laughs> like before he was traded, or you well, like kind of. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, or just like I mean, like they had they do prompt up Patterson and Quinn Hughes, but it's just it's just weird. It's like this love affair with JT Miller with a guy that he has produced a lot better since coming to Vancouver, but he's not exactly like that guy that I'd build a team around. Sure. And you can make the argument that both of them should have been traded and that, and depending on who you ask and depending on how you look at it could be the correct answer is that both of JT Miller and Boho Arat should have been gone. If you're really tearing this thing down, like they played themselves out of Connor Bedard. Yeah. Unless the a miracle happens uh, uh, at the draft lottery, they have played themselves out of Connor Bedard, which if I'm them is a, is a brutal, brutal. Yeah. Like how you've played yourself out of a generational player. Let's call it what it is. From BC, not just a generational player, <laughs> a generational player from British Columbia. Do you know the marketing? Just, oh, 
I can't even, I, the things that would have gone on, it would be LeBron great. James level of going to, yeah, Cleveland. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's just, well, not to that extent because hockey is nowhere close to basketball, unfortunately. Um, but, but man, it would have been nice to see him in Vancouver for the story. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, 